With its 2050 roadmaps, the European Union is setting out a plan to meet the long-term target of reducing emissions by 80 to 95 percent by the year 2050 and is exploring routes towards a decarbonized energy system. All the scenarios of the European Commission indicate a growing share of renewables. A strong growth of renewable energy is described as a no-regrets option. Claude Turmes is a member of the Greens Group in the European Parliament. He was Rapporteur for the Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Directives. Good morning, Claude. Good morning. A main challenge today is to ensure that strong growth in renewable energy continues after 2020, when the current renewables framework with binding targets expires. How should a 2030 energy and climate package look like? The, uh, we see a lot of investments uh, in Europe today in uh, renewable energy. Uh, the reason for this is that we have uh, clear targets uh, at European level uh, and also targets for each and every government uh, at national level. And this creates uh, investment security and this creates, for example, also relatively uh, cheap uh, loans from the banks because they know that this is a priority for, for governments. Uh, in order to continue this after 2020, uh, the, uh, with the easiest thing for Europe is to continue with a clear renewable target for uh, 2030. We think that it should be in the range of uh, 45 percent of renewables. In 2020, we will be at 20 percent, uh, doubling it from today. And uh, if we and we we can, uh, because also renewables will be cheaper, more available. The supply will be there. Uh, more grid will have been built. Meanwhile, so we can more than double uh, than between 2020 and 2030. In the current economic climate, how do you assess the chances that ambitious targets for emissions reduction, renewables and energy efficiency will be adopted for 2030? And what has to be done to reach the targets for the year 2020? Uh, all uh, studies show that, uh, in the, especially in the field of electricity, uh, prices for electricity will go up, but uh, that this is not uh, due to investments of uh, uh, renewables. Uh, prices will go up because anyway we will have to replace uh, old existing coal and nuclear power plants. And uh, in that sense, uh, I think we should try to, uh, to better explain the underlying figures. Uh, wind onshore is uh, extremely competitive. Uh, there is no other technology in the field of uh, electricity which has reduced its cost as much as uh, photovoltaic, uh, so uh, electricity production from the sun. Uh, these two technologies will be at the center of the European power system. They do not create any risk for society, nor uh, on the nuclear side, nor on the climate side. So uh, these technologies uh, should be uh, those which uh, should be mainly invested uh, in the European power system. How could the renewable energy potential in Europe be pooled and how to deal with the fact that there is currently no agreement between all member states on a transition towards renewables? Of course you have a lot of uh, economic interests. In Poland you have the coal industry, in uh, France and in Britain you have the nuclear industry. Uh, so uh, these industries are of course not pleased that uh, renewables are uh, basically much more accepted by society than them. That, uh, uh, and, and in that sense they are losing market shares and, and these lobbies, the coal and nuclear lobbies, the big uh, energy companies are of course uh, very important, very big, very efficient lobbyists and they try to derail what society wants. Society wants green energy and uh, I'm uh, quite optimistic that uh, citizens together with policy makers, especially also from the Green Group, will be able to move the, the show in Europe in favour of renewable energies. Thank you very much, Claude, for this interview. Thank you.